Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope everybody is having a wonderful Sunday. Uh, I, what I want to do today is I'm going to talk to you all about how to get these chaos orbs. So I'm sure all of you have pieces of gear like this. This piece of gear is actually one of the two pieces I got from the Elder Drake event, uh, where you got those two gold skulls and you could exchange them for a legendary piece of gear. So I exchanged mine for this uh, HP% percent Adept Bracer and I was really excited to get it and then I rolled it and I got one small roll into move speed and I got three rolls into flat attack. So I remember doing this actually um, on stream and everybody was just saying rip and now though what we can do is we can re-roll these secondary stats here uh, to try and make it better so i still don't have any of these chaos orbs but i do have 29 shards if you look up here in the top right hand corner it says i have 29 shards available and you only need 50 of them in order to uh in order to try and re-roll this as, as one orb so that's what we're going to talk about today before I touch on that though, uh, I do want to talk about a couple other things. First, let's go to the shop and talk about this special event. So everybody knows about the common disc event. Everyone was very excited about it. Um, from what I understand, everyone's still excited about it. Uh, I've gotten everything except for this double XP boost because I already have one in my inbox and what I want to do is save it so that I can leave it when I do buy it and it goes here to my inbox it will stay longer so I got this one from the login reward uh, but I only have seven days until it expires six left now so I'm gonna wait as long as I can to buy the second one so that I have a longer gap before that one expires uh, I hope that makes sense but the main thing I want to talk to you guys about is I know a lot of you I was talking in stream about it yesterday and a lot of people were coming in and they're like, oh, I need to summon 250 common discs in order to finish this part of the event. Uh, what you guys need to know is you do not need to summon these discs. I know there's only four days left in the event, so I may be a little bit late on letting you guys know this, um, but I didn't realize people were doing this until yesterday. So you don't need to summon these at all. All you need to do is go to this shop here special event and buy these things if you buy just the tutor alone that's all you have to do and you come back here and it will clear this entire event for you just buying one tutor so whatever you do if you're trying to summon enough to finish the event stop summoning and start using your common discs in the shop to buy whatever you can for the last four days so i hope that helps um i really didn't know realize that people were going to do it that way or else I would have mentioned it in my common disc video. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the giveaway we're going to be doing. Uh, I will talk about that at the end though so that I don't keep rambling here at the beginning of this. Um, so stay tuned to the end of the video if you are curious about our giveaway. So alright, let's jump into this. What do we need to do in order to get these chaos shards? The only place as of right now other than events to get them is co-op. So as many of you know, there's three levels. Nightmare is ridiculously difficult and no one's been able to complete it yet. So don't worry about that one just yet. Let's focus on the first two levels. Um, this level here, Legend, which is the middle level, is actually quite difficult and you can't do it with bots. So unless you're one of the, probably, I don't know, one of the better players in the game, I wouldn't focus too much on this level yet. Um, you probably won't be able to do it to be honest uh, so really what i'm focusing on today is epic so what you can do when you come into epic you can do 25 runs of this per week uh, the week though is a little bit weird the week ends where is it i know it says it somewhere i'm not honestly i'm not sure when the week ends exactly uh, but as you can see our Maybe if we click on this, no. So you get, you do get one point for Epic and five points for Legend. So, and that's just for this part here. 
So that is why our guild, Epic Gaming, is so far ahead of everybody else, is because we've been doing a lot of the middle difficulty and getting five points per run uh, instead of just one point per run. So that's kind of given us, us this edge. And then, of course, it gives us rewards at the end of the week. I really thought, though, it, it said on here when the uh, when it ended. Oh, here it is. Available September 5th to September 12th. So that's three days from now. So that's going to land on Wednesday is the reset for this. So it's going to be light, the light boss for the next three days. So I know a lot of people don't have a lot of good dark attackers, but for which you would need for legend. But coming back to epic, you really don't need light attackers for legend. You can do this. We, we're going to do it with bots. Um, you can only get up to 25 shards per week from this level. And I've already gotten all 25 of mine, so it really doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is come in here. I'm going to do it a couple of different ways. First, let's use the Blade Master and a healer. So I'm going to run a Candy Munchkin for myself. So as a healer, we don't need a defense break. Uh, if we did, we would bring Xenia. But pretty much anything will work here. I'm going to just bring this guy, uh, just to show that we don't need dark champions. And then, well, here, can I use the water one? Yeah. I was going to use the dark one. Uh, obviously, the dark one would be better here. The dark candy munchkin, because uh, she has element advantage. If you didn't already know, everybody that isn't the opposite of the boss you're facing, uh, so everyone that doesn't have element advantage, actually has element disadvantage. So in this case, all three of these units have element disadvantage, including the nature or the light one, which is the same as the boss we're running. So I'm just kind of gonna try and use this to show you guys that it doesn't really matter uh, what we use. We're gonna. It doesn't really matter because we are using two attackers. So we're going to go HP just to be a little safer. Let's click ready. Click battle. It's a little difficult using bots. Um, I don't recommend doing this. If you can, save these units. Use them one at a time. And get as many of these chaos orbs as you can. Uh, because you can only get 25 per week, right? So you want to be able to get the maximum every week. Even if you're only doing this middle difficulty, that means that every other week you can get a full Chaos Orb and you can re-roll one of your pieces of gear. So as you saw with mine, I'm up to 29 already. Um, I'm hoping to do a few more of the Legendary difficulty before the week is over to get it's probably somewhere between between somewhere around 35 so early next week I'll be able to re-roll a piece of gear which is gonna be really nice all right so the boss has landed first thing you want to do is break that shield so we broke the shield relatively quickly and he flies away you keep in mind you can't attack the boss here it doesn't well you can but it won't do any good because he's far away Alright, so you can see here I got killed. Hopefully, so the boss, well, <laughs> the Archangel revived me, and then the boss killed me again right away. And there we go. So, that's only, that's with two bots, that's not anybody manualing that, that's just basically on auto. Um... Relatively easy though. Unfortunately, we got a flat stat bracer, but you can get decent five star gear here. It's not going to be easy, but it's also free to run. So you can see we, ha we had a couple of deaths in there. We had three deaths in there, and we still managed to complete the run relatively easily. Uh, normally, your chaos orb would pop up here, and that's one of your 25 for the week. So coming back again, how else can we try and find a way to make this work? Being the light day, it's a little more difficult because you do need dark champs uh, to have element advantage. 
I just happen to have the dark candy munchkin built. So let's see if we can do another one just to show you guys another option. So with the double blade masters, that is the easiest way. Or sorry, with the blade master and candy munchkin is probably the easiest way. Uh, with some sort of healer that can revive you if you die. All right, so we actually got some person in here, Elder King. Uh, oh, he's the leader. So let's see what happens. We're gonna run our. This is not really what I was thinking. We're gonna run our Candy Munchkin, and hopefully he just runs another healer. Whether he bots it or somebody else comes in and they run a healer. I would love to, apparently he is the the leader of the group, so it's kind of up to him if he wants to wait for someone else to come in or if he wants to add a bot. If nothing happens soon, we're going to just go out and we'll come back in again. Oh, there we go. So start, um, I think he kicked him, oh no, he's still there. So Starzik and Elder King, and they are going to run two healers, so. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was going to do. Um, I was going to... Well, he happens to have the Dark Candy Munchkin, so that'll be fine. That'll make it even stronger. Uh, basically, now, you're just hoping that this Candy Munchkin can solo the boss. They may have to revive me a few times. Just so you know, Manaz isn't really a good unit for this, but maybe he just doesn't have uh, any strong healers or any strong uh, dark units. The reason he isn't good for it is because cooldown reduction doesn't work against this boss. Alright, we'll kick, quick skip. So this will be the last run and then I'm going to talk about what units are good uh, and what units are not. Or what units I feel are good and which ones I feel are not. I know some people, not everybody's going to agree with me. Um, I'm not a big fan of the pirates in this, but I know a lot of people love them. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to basic skill on all these guys because they're so easy to kill. And then when the boss comes up, we're just going to use our ultimate to break the shield. And do as much damage as we can, and then we'll just wait until he lands again, and we'll use our ultimate again. Alright, so here comes the boss. What I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to use my basic skill just a couple of times. And now the shield's off, and now we'll ultimate. We got him down to about half health, which, considering we're only at... Uh, we only have one damage dealer, that's pretty good. Alright, so we're down now to about 25% left, maybe 30%. Get the ultimate off, and there we go. So relatively easy if you have a candy munchkin. Uh, you can run two healers and get the job done. Uh, you don't need to waste your your blade master combo on there, uh, but you can if you want. If you're having a hard time, or if you just want to do it quicker, uh, because the runs will go faster. So let's back out here and let's go over. We're gonna go over all the units. Just a second, my dog's jumping up on the counter. Cassius, get down. Sorry, guys. It's rather awkward in the middle of a video, but I put some meat out to thaw, and he was pretty excited about that. All right, so let's go into Champions Collection, and let's run through these. So first of all, remember that you need to have element advantage in the higher stages. You don't need it in the lower stages. So that's kind of, it's up to you what how you want to do that. For starters, the Archangels, we're going to go through his families instead of unit by unit. So the Archangels, I did use the Light Arch Archangel here. And actually, you know what? Let's go to only Ascended. So we use Valor. Uh, you can use the Archangels if you want to. They're not the strongest units because they do have a very slow heal. 
they do have a shield though, so they're not terrible. Uh, for epic, you'll be fine with an archangel as long as you have a strong team with you. The blade masters are amazing. The reason the blade masters are amazing is because of their ultimate skill, Thousand Blades. Because it attacks 16 times, they can almost break the boss's shield all on their own. So the shield that comes up isn't broken by damage, it's broken by the number of attacks against it. So that's why the Candy Munchkins and the Blade Masters are so good, is because they do so many attacks with their ultimate so fast that they'll break the shield really quickly and you can do a lot of damage. The Divas, the only one I've really seen used is the Water Diva. Um, I don't know many people with the Light and Dark Divas, but the Water Diva is great as a healer. You did see her in that uh, second match there. These Greater Demons aren't great. If you want to run a healer, a Greater Demon, and a Candy Munchkin, I'm sure that would work. Uh, you'd have to time the ultimate relatively well, because you'd have to wait until the shield was down and have the defense break up. But I'm sure it could work, it's just not the best unit. Uh, Monkey Kings are kind of the same thing, like you could use them as a secondary damage dealer because they do have a defense break, um, and they, they do a decent amount of damage. But again, you need to time it right, they're not great for breaking shields, uh, but they could be decent damage dealers for, for the, uh, like say if you're using the fire one, uh, they'd be a good de uh, damage dealer against the nature boss. Coming down to the Ink Ninjas, I actually think the Ink Ninjas are amazing for this. So, I've one-shot the uh, Epic Boss twice, maybe three three or four times, but I remember, I've only used him twice in Epic, and both times we one-shot the boss. The two times you saw us run, we took three rotations before we killed the boss, and he did it first time every time. The reason is his mark, uh, so you want to land that mark really quickly. And he also happens to have a defense break and big damage as well. Uh, they're really, really strong for for this. But remember, if you are going to use him, you need someone to break the shield still. So maybe running Washi in a Candy Munchkin or Washi in a Blade Master. Uh, I would tend to run the Candy Munchkin just because they have the defense break. But if you're going to run a Blade Master, you'd run Washi, the Blade Master, and maybe Xenia as your healer because Xenia has a defense break. Uh, these guys I don't think are very good. I wouldn't use them in in this at all. Uh, as for the Tiki's, maybe you could use the Dark Tiki because she has a defense buff, but yeah, she doesn't have a heal. So honestly, I probably wouldn't. Maybe if you had her, you could use her if you had her built for the next level up. You could use her for Legend. Uh, maybe as your fourth unit. And, but that would only be against the light boss. The same thing with these guys, they're not very good. Uh, the candy munchkins are amazing, all of them are really good. Preferably the ones with the defense break, so the dark one and the water one. Uh, but the fire nature and light ones are really good as well, as long as you make sure to remember to bring a defense break with them. If you don't bring a defense break, you might not do enough damage, and then you'll be dead. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to laugh, it, that was an accident, I swear. But I don't, I'm not so sure I would use these guys in there. I mean, you could try. He does do multi-hits, but I mean, I don't know. It could work to break the shield against, if you had him six-starred with good gear, uh, he could potentially do decent damage against the fire boss. These Dino Kids don't really offer much for co-op, unfortunately. They're mostly for their stuns. They can do some damage. Uh, I know someone in our guild tried to run this Dark One in Legend, and it just didn't work. Uh, as for the Bombers, the Bombers are interesting. I know a lot of people tend to really like the Bombers. Let me see if I can find the Dark One. Because I was raiding the other day, trying to do Legend, and somebody was trying to use this Dark One. Mm. So it does big damage, and it's supposed to help. So the nice thing is that it deals with the shields really, really quickly, right? 
Um, where is the skill that says it does that? Damaging enemies near primary target. Second explosion. Oh, so this one doesn't. This one doesn't. It just does bonus damage based on number of debuffs. Um, but I know some of them deal with shields really well. I haven't tested them against the bosses yet, but they could potentially could be good as well. If you're gonna run them as damage dealers, same thing. Just make sure you have a defense break, and you should be fine. All right. So where were we? Next up is these girls. Uh, all of the fairies that do damage, so Wink, Zip, and whatever the light one's name, yeah, the light one's name is, I think it's Buzz or something like that, um, they're all really good because they do a ton of damage as well on the co-op boss. Again, you need a defense break and you need someone to break the shield, but she can be a great secondary uh, nuker. I haven't really tried Stella or Astra yet, but same thing I would think. I would think they would be decent against as like a second damage dealer. Yoko and Haruko, and, well, not Haruko, sorry. The, the water magic girl and the fire magic girl are both really strong uh, for your as your healer because they also have damage mitigation and death prevention. So that's really, really strong against the boss. I would definitely recommend bringing them in. The dark one as well, of course. Um, you can, we were trying to use Gabion for the Nagas, so you can use the Nagas if you want to. I would think they'd probably be more like your fourth unit in Epic, or sorry, in Legendary as your fourth unit if you have Elemental Advantage. Now, I already mentioned the Pirates. I know a lot of people love using Kendrick and Harlow. I'm not a big fan, but the, this one here, oh, this one, never mind. The attack buff and defense break is nice from him, but he doesn't do all that much more. I think it's Kendrick, right? Yeah, so Kendrick would be better for clearing the boss because he has this bombardment skill, which would multi-hit, so he could help break the shield. And he has the defense break and attack buff as well, so against the water boss, Kendrick could be useful. Uh, the Scions. I really like the Scions. Unfortunately, I don't think they're that great for co-op. Um, I've tried my Nature Scion a few times and it just hasn't worked. I'm probably going to try him again in some epic runs just to see why he's not working. Because uh, I feel like he should be good enough to work there. I feel like he's got some multi-hits with the drones and stuff and he should be okay at breaking the shield. Uh, the Dark one I think would be great because he does have a defense break. So I feel like he would still be good. These guys I don't think are that great. I wouldn't use them in there. Uh, same with the Snake Ladies. Most of the Snake Ladies damage, even though the, the Dark One has a multi-hit on her last skill, um, I feel like it doesn't really matter. Like It's not enough. Uh, most of their damage is based on ongoing damage, which wasn't work on the boss. Uh, same thing here. These girls aren't that great for the boss as well. Manas and Vimal and Sharma, unfortunately, aren't very good here either, as all they bring is the heal. Uh, damage, a cooldown reduction doesn't work, so that's no no use to at all. Well, down to the three stars, I'm just going to kind of run through which ones I like, and I've seen a lot of. Xenia, Peppermint, Ginger Sweet, we already talked about them. Um, I haven't seen much of these Dragon Guards. Uh, you can use Violet and Lily as healers if you'd like. Again, these guys might be good. I haven't really tested them very much. Daz, not not Buzz. I think I called her Buzz. But Daz is good. Um, Dodgy is probably good for the light boss. Huxian is probably good for the dark boss. Like we said, Katsuko is really good. Gamma probably would be a good secondary nuker. Yua is really good. Uh, Rhoda can be good as well. So we're hopefully Sigrin will be good for next week. And I think that's about it. So in terms of units you can use, I hope that helps. Um, we did go through a lot there and this video is getting a little long. So that's probably all I'm going to talk about that. But like I said, you want to be able to re-roll these pieces of gear that you get 
that just don't roll very well or don't get very good substats. Because not only does it re-roll everything, but it gives you new substats as well. Uh, so you could potentially get a crazy overpowered piece of gear. Uh, or you could get something bad. I've already re-rolled one and I got bad re-rolls, but that's the whole point of this, is to try and get as many as you can and try and roll as many of these pieces of gear as possible. Because as you guys know, getting a legendary HP% percent bracer uh, of whatever set you're trying to get is really, really difficult. And if you have one, you don't want it to just to sell it because it doesn't have good substats. So get these orbs, re-roll that stuff, and... I wish you the best of luck. I know I'm getting close to mine, and I'm excited to re-roll that piece in particular. What I'm probably going to do is move it off of them all and onto somebody else if I get good substats, but we'll go from there. So, what I want to talk about last, we're just going to turn this dungeon on. Uh, last thing I want to touch on is, first of all, I got the t-shirts in. So, if you didn't already know, and you've already won a t-shirt for one of our past giveaways, uh, they have now been sent out and you should be getting them sometime soon in the next week or two uh, So that's super exciting. Also, I have a full stack more here that I want to give away and We happen to be getting really close to 500 subscribers here and 500 followers on Twitch so what I did is we I talked to Gameloft and they have agreed to help us out and they're going to promote our 500 follower stream. So when we get to 500 followers, not only are we going to have a promoted stream where uh, they kind of advertise the stream, I think both in game and out of game uh, is what we ended up agreeing to. So they're going to like promote it on Facebook and try and get as many viewers there as we can. Not only that, and not only do I have all these t-shirts to give away, but also Gameloft has graciously given us some giveaways from them as well. So if you stuck around to the end of the video, uh, keep stay tuned for that. Basically the giveaway is going to be, there's gonna be, it's gonna be a 12 hour stream and there's going to be 12 giveaways. So one every hour from Gameloft plus the t-shirt. So there's gonna be minimum 17 giveaways in over the 12 hours. Also we're doing a huge summon session um, I'm, I've done exactly, as you can see in the banner right there, um, I've done exactly 500 summons since my last Nat 5. And since I figured we're getting to 500 followers and 500 subscribers at the same time, um, I figured we would save our summons and do a massive summon session during that stream as well. So I'm guessing, it's, I'm kind of guessing how long it's going to take to get there, but we should have over 200 summons for that day. So that's pretty exciting. That should give us, hopefully, our next Snap 5. Um, if not, then at least the Water Magic Girl, who I still don't have. Uh, I've been trying to get as many summons as I can for that. Uh, so, sorry, I keep getting off topic. You guys want to know the giveaways, I'm sure. What we're giving away for each of the 12 hours. So there'll be one on the hour, every single hour. You have to be in stream, and you have to be following both, both channels, preferably. Um... You don't have to be, but it would be helpful to me if you're following both channels. Um, I know most of you do already, so that's not an issue. But subscribe here if you haven't already. And make sure you head over to Twitch and follow the channel on Twitch because we can't do these giveaways until we hit 500 followers. Um, we're at 400 and something now on Twitch. We're at 405, I think, on Twitch. And we're at... 397 here so we need a hundred more on each channel approximately and then we can do this massive giveaway and on the hour what we're going to be giving away is each package will contain one tutor fuzzle puff one four star max fuzzle puff and 200 gems so we're getting that times 12 and every winner will get that package and then, so you can only win one package each, but also you will have a chance to win a t-shirt that I will personally mail to you. Um, so hopefully you guys are excited about that. Uh, like I said, if you haven't already followed the Twitch channel in particular, that's the one where we need to get to uh, 500 followers before we're allowed to do the giveaway. So make sure you head over there. It is twitch.tv slash five finger shuffle if you haven't already followed it. Also, if you forget the link, it is down in the description below so make sure you check that out i hope everybody has a great day i hope this video helped you out 
If it did, don't forget to like it and share it with your friends. And of course, hit that subscribe button. And we will see you guys all soon with another video. Uh, I will be streaming uh, tonight for a little bit. But our next regular DH3 stream won't be until Tuesday. So hopefully everybody has a great night. And we'll see you all soon. I'll stop rambling. And bye.